ready. We are live. Let's see how this uh, first test live stream goes to uh, to see what happens in the future. All right, just let me know when you guys can see my face. There's a bit of delay between uh, between me talking and the screen. Uh, I've got nothing planned today. Just a well, just just a test stream to see if it works. So um. If anyone's got any questions, anything they want to see, let me know and uh, I'll be there. Um, for now, I'll show you some progress that's been happening. Um, as you can see behind me here, we have the rocket on its uh, launch pad. The launch pad is uh, all steel frame with aluminium around it. So all the edging around here is aluminium. So the corner pieces, all this is brushed aluminium, aluminium checker plate top. Um, so that's coming along nicely. It's got a fair bit of work to go on the electronics for it. Uh, so the base clamps which hold it down, they were working. However, they were not working. They're not working anymore, sorry. Um, so I need, to, I need to fix them, essentially. The voltage regulators for them burnt out, and then the servos burnt out, so I need to buy more of them. The regulators have been replaced, however. So I had to do some pretty dodgy stuff on this before I switch screens here to just the webcam. Um, so this is the launchpad computer, and you can see that the regulators are now off the computer. Oh, I just pulled the heat shrink off. That's just how how good my soldering is. <laughs> so um, these are going to be bolted onto the aluminium, and essentially by bolting them onto the aluminium, we're using the launch pad itself as a uh, essentially a big heat sink for it. So the regulators shouldn't overheat anymore. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, what's going on in the live chat? We can see you. Awesome. Awesome. Good to know everybody. Um, you know, once again, <laughs> don't expect anything fancy for this stream. I've got nothing planned. Uh, it's just a test to see if this is uh, viable in the future. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test some things here. I've got a bunch of screens set up for us. So I've got this screen, the desktop, with me in the corner so I can, uh, I can do whatever on here. We've got just the webcam so I can show you things. Uh, I apologize for the webcam glitches. It's um, it's quite an old webcam that I'm using. However, I do intend on getting an adapter for my DSLR camera. So I should get uh, really good quality camera footage before the, uh, before the next stream or, or shortly. Uh, the next screen is just screen one. So you can't see my face or anything. Uh, this has both screens, so this looks a bit dodgy to you guys, but essentially on on the screen here I have all of the YouTube and uh, streaming software set up So I don't see any reason as to why I'd ever need this But if I want to have two pieces of code one on each screen then I can do that uh, I also have screen 2 and my face uh, And that's all I have as well as of course the standby screen Okay, so go back to the webcam for now. Um, what have we got in the live chat just here? Yep, alright, so everyone can see me. It's all going well. We've got nine people watching now. That's, that's more than I expected. <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting many people at all to watch this. Um, what can I show you guys? Uh, you guys have seen the controller a lot. It's getting heavier as I add more stuff to it. So now, inside of it, if I can get this open and hit it, um, underneath the panel, the main panel, I've now got the battery mounted. Um, so that's added a, a fair bit of weight to the system. Um, get that back in where it should be. Uh, the speaker still um, doesn't doesn't do anything yet. So I have all the parts for that. I simply haven't gotten the time to do it. Um, 
Now it's just an accessory thing, it's not really very useful for the first launch. Uh, we have a question in the chat from Objective Space. When did you start work on Sonics? Actually, I've been logging everything that I do um, in uh, big documents and stuff, and I can tell you as a fact that I started um, I started initial 3D design on the 4th of October last year. So it's been around seven or eight months now of uh, of, of solid work. So it, it's coming along. It's it, it's slow progress, but hopefully we'll see a launch in in, a, in three or four months. Um, currently got some software problems to get past, which are making life difficult. <laughs> um, but we'll we'll get there on the software, you know. Uh, Jason Carpenter, one idea: have a storage compartment inside the controller. Uh, that is is a very good idea. I have had that idea. I haven't done anything about it yet. Um, wow, this cam is very glitchy. <laughs> um, so underneath the panel, there is actually a bunch of foam, and this th foam is about an inch thick. So what I can do with that foam is I can cut out sections in it and then I can store fragile stuff in there because it's already in a really nice solid case. Um, so that is something that I will probably be doing. Um, everything that I do, <laughs> I care more about how it looks than the functionality of it. Um, which is why the rocket's carbon fiber for starters. Carbon fiber is so impractical, so ridiculously useless on a lot of rockets. Um, here, now the, now, it's not, now the camera won't annoy you as much. It's so ridiculously useless on a lot of rocket because compared to its cardboard equivalent, it's actually 100 grams heavier. So the whole, the, just the body, carbon fiber body, weighs, I think it was 250 grams-ish and the cardboard equivalent that I have was 150 grams. Uh, the initial reason for doing carbon fiber is because I live in Australia and getting uh, model rocket cardboard tubes from Apogee Components was going to be $60 shipping for a bit of cardboard and I couldn't justify that so I decided to do carbon fiber. Uh, it turned out to be way more expensive than $60 shipping um, and obviously heavier, but I think it was worth it. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it is probably the first thrust vector controlled model rocket to be made from carbon fiber. Um, but when this breaks, and I say when because it's not going to work first try, um, when this breaks or has a major failure or something, the next rocket will be made from fiberglass. Uh, I have plenty of fiberglass laying around. It's far cheaper and I believe it's lighter. Um, obviously, I'm not going for strength. It's not about strength. It's a fairly low-speed motor rocket, so strength isn't isn't really necessary for this. But um, Jason Carpenter's got another question. Spare parts needed could be hidden and accessed just by lifting the top. Uh, yes, it could. However, it was my birthday recently, and I gave Mum and Dad a little list of things I needed which included this case. So it's just your standard case, got a label printer as well, so I printed a nice little label for it. And uh, with this, I'll be able to store everything I could possibly need, all my small parts. So that will be going to the launch sites, um, obviously, as well as the controller. Um, what else have we got? We have... This toolbox, this will be the toolbox that I'll be using. Uh, just because I think the open top makes it quite convenient for for, uh, for on-site use. Um, as I said, everything needs to look cool. Everything needs to look awesome. So at the launch site, there is also going to be my new NASA bag, which I'll just carry all my general equipment in. So, um... That, that, that's pretty cool, yes. Um, now, the thing that I've got one problem with is I need to transport the rocket. 
And I know, I know, you've, you've, you've probably seen uh, other people, like Joe Barnard, for example, um, put his rocket across the back seat of his car. But I don't want to do that. Everything I do needs to look awesome. And that, that matters more than the actual rocket launch. So one consideration I've had is to put the rocket in a rifle case. Get a hard shell rifle case and put the rocket in that. And then rock up with a launch site with a rifle case. Um, however, that, that that's another $80 for, for a really cheap one that uh, I could save. It's getting to the stage in the project where I'm trying to save as much money as I can now. Uh, the, the cost is just ridiculous. Uh, Ricardo Toledo, are you using black powder charges for parachute ejection on the rocket? Yes, I am. So the motors in the rocket are going to be Estes F-15 motors and the ejection charges will be removed. Uh, I'm not doing that. I have no idea how to do that. I'm not going to mess with that stuff. Uh, I know a local pyrotechnician which is going to be handling all that stuff. Uh, and the pyrotechnician is also uh, going to be making the ejection charges. So that will just be black powder charges, which will sit uh, just in this part of the rocket, right about here, just below the T. And um, when those rockets go up, for the, when, those rocket, when those ejection charges um, go off from the flight computer in here, it will push a piston in here, and above the piston is the parachute, which will push off the nose cone. So it's kind of like a, a chain reaction. The explosion goes off here, and everything gets pushed out the top. Um, just, or just your standard piston ejection system, if you've seen that before. Uh, Jason Carpenter, RC core to the pad. These, these are some really good ideas. I would like to do that. Um, as you can expect, the launch pad being solid steel frame, or holy core, but steel frame, it weighs a lot. It's, it's quite a heavy thing to cart around. Uh, and then add the pneumatic system, the pneumatics weigh a lot. Um, it, all, it all adds up pretty quick. So I will be taking a off-road sort of four-wheel trolley to the launch site. So I'll be able to take the launch pad out of the van, dump it on the trolley, uh, and off I go. Um, some of the questions you might have about that is the strong back. So the strong back holding the top of the rocket, um, as a lot of you may or may not know, has a, um, a pneumatic system to pull it back, so it's on a hinge. Now. Currently, there's no air in that pneumatic system, so if I was to lightly touch that strong back, it would just fall back right now. There's nothing really holding it in place apart from the friction on the piston, which isn't much because it's lubricated. Um, so the problem with that is transport. How do I transport something like this? So the plan is that I'm going to have a separate ball valve somewhere on the pad that I can turn, and it will just force air into the piston to hold that strong back upright and then I can just lay down the launch pad in the back of the van and strap it down for uh, for safe transport. I don't want things getting scratched, you know. Um, what have we got? Jason Carpenter, get a rocket sock. Uh, I have considered that. I have considered that, certainly. Um, however, I think, I think there's cooler ways of doing it. For the first launch, possibly, yes. I don't think I need to buy an $80 plus hard rifle case for the first launch. I don't need to get everything for the first launch, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated through Twitter mainly. Um, Andrew Borger, hey, I made it. Thank you for coming. We've got eight people watching right now. <laughs> that's, that's a lot more than I thought it would be. Um, I was expecting about three people to watch this. It is a test stream. Once again, I have nothing planned, it's just me talking. <laughs> um, some people might be wondering about the remove before flight tag. Now anyone who's into rockets will probably know this. Uh, in, the, in the aerospace industry they often use those tags on real rockets. Um, so I was like, why not just add one to my rocket, it looks cool. So all it is, it's on a bit of, it's on, it's on a pin which goes through the uh, carbon fiber airframe and into the piston, so that's actually jammed inside of the piston ejection system. So the something was meant to happen, the parachute couldn't deploy right now, which it's not stopping that for any reason. That's completely irrelevant. It just looks cool. Uh, objective space. Thanks for watching, mate. See you later. Have a good day. Um, I have tried to make this stream at a time where it suits people in Australia 
and people in America. Obviously, a lot of my audience, well, probably most of my audience, are in the uh, the USA, America. So I've tried to make that convenient for all of you. It should be at a fairly decent time. I think some places in America it was like 8.30, some places 9.30. Um, Sorry about that. That was weird. Jason Carpenter, once again. You can always use the magic of cutting the camera and restarting for your post. No one will know your launch transport is in a back seat. Yeah, but I have some really cool shots in mind. So, after the first launch, I really want to make a really cool montage of, uh, of me building the rocket and of the actual first launch, including setup and stuff. So I have some really cool shots in mind of me, me holding the controller case and, and the rocket case, sort of walking in like a, like a slow motion shot behind me, if that makes sense. Now, I'm, I'm no filmmaker like, a, like, like our buddy Joe Barnard, but, but uh, I've, got, I've got some cool shots in mind. Uh, I am working to up my YouTube game. The YouTube video qualities originally were quite bad. Uh, the recent videos I tried to make better, it's still not as good as I'd hope that'd be, uh, but I, I am learning a lot along the way, so hopefully videos in the future will get better. While I'm on that topic, I've had a lot of people ask me, Eddie, when's the next YouTube video going to be? Well, it's been a long time, and that is because I am trying to get the launch pad finished before the next video. So hopefully by the time the next video comes, it, it will be about the launch pad, so I need to finish the launch pad electronic systems, um, program it, which isn't very complicated software. It's mostly wireless, which makes it a bit more complicated. So everything's controlled by the controller wirelessly. Um, however, it, it should be pretty pretty straightforward and simple to code. Once once the launch pad computer uh, is working nicely, which it's, it still has its problems, like like any PCB, nothing works the first try. <laughs> Well, I'm not an expert, so. Uh, what have we got? Man child is here. Uh, eight people watching now. Um, if anyone else has any more questions, then, then uh, uh, let me know, okay? So, in the meantime, I'm going to talk a bit about thrust vector control because anyone being stupid in the comments, I'm just going to delete your comments, alright? Um, so, this here is the first gimbal. Not very good at all. <laughs> it had a lot of uh, restrictions with moving. Uh, the servos weren't working properly. Uh, it didn't fit inside the airframe properly. Had problems down here where it's uh, where it's broken. So that that was no good. That needed to be upgraded pretty quickly. Which brings me to the second one, which was far better. It worked quite nicely. However, it could have it could it could be better. So the third one, which is hopefully the final one for now, hopefully we'll be launching on the first launch is in the bottom of the rocket right now and it's not easy to get the rocket off the pad so that's staying there for now <laughs> um harrison mosey when's the rocket launching uh hopefully in about three months so uh i'm i'm working hard on that but i don't i don't really know there we go so We'll see what happens. Software problems are holding that from uh, from happening, but hopefully we'll get there. You know. What else is there to talk about here? Flight computers. Now I I know that anyone who has tried to do thrust vector controlled rockets has had pretty major difficult problems with flight computers because 
because of their complexity, it's one of the hardest parts, both the hardware and the software of it. So to tackle that, what I did is on the shelf up here, I made a prototype flight computer. So it's on just a bit of breadboard, everything I need's on there. So it had a spot, well, everything, my screen flipped for some reason. I had a spot for the nano, had a spot for the SD cards, then it had all the sensors along the top here, uh, and everything that it needed, and then it had all of the wiring on the back, which is horrible. I hate it so much. I cannot even explain how much I hate this. Um, so, <laughs> this was designed just for testing. This was never designed to go in a rocket, um, but it, it never it, it never performed very well because it had a lot of shorts, it had a lot of problems, it, it wasn't very good. Um, so immediately after that, I moved on to the Summit Rev A flight computer, which I pulled out of the rocket <laughs> earlier. Um, so I'll, I'll make the screen a bit bigger for you here. If we go over to webcam, there we go. So I made that, uh, then it, it it, had, it once again uses an Arduino Nano for the uh, the microcontroller. It's got a BMP280 for altitude and an MPU6050. Now, this had two major problems. The starters, it um it used an MPU6050, which <laughs> anyone who tried to use the MPU6050 has probably found that it has a lot of what they call gyro drift. So essentially over time the measurements on it get more and more inaccurate. Um, so the, the rocket, instead of going straight, it will just start thinking it's all over the place. So that, that's not a very good sensor, it's, a quite, it's quite a basic sensor. Uh, I also had major problems with the pyro channels um, because I didn't make the trace width on the PCB thick enough and the high current just burnt those off. Um, so if, if, if we look on the back of this, let me get this rubber band out of the way for us. Just here next to my finger, I'm not sure how well you can see that. Yeah, you can see that alright. There is a, uh, a line going straight across. That line's not meant to be there. That line is not good. Um, so after that, after I realized that that was shocking and not working properly, I went on to developing uh, Summit Rev B, which never got produced because it had that many problems in the PCB design. Um, as you all know, I'm no expert. <laughs> I, I, I am a, I, I'm not an expert in any of this stuff. I'm learning as I go along. So I made the PCB design. I sent it to some people and they looked at it and they said, Eddie, you can't make this. It's shocking. It's never going to work. Um, there was tra traces too thin. There was things wrong with the schematic. So then I went on to Summit Rev C, which is the one that I currently have. Um, and I took a lot of time working that out properly, working out all the resistor values, working out the trace widths. Uh, that took me quite a while to make. And I have that right here. So the only problem this currently has is that my SD card on the back just here doesn't work. The schematic for that is wrong, so it does not work at all. Um, as you can see, it uses a different inertial measurement unit. It uses a LSM9DS1, which is quite a mouthful. Um, now, the problem with that sensor is that it, it, it has no way of giving you an orientation of the rocket in degrees. So if this is zero degrees, we got 45 degrees, it doesn't tell you that. It tells you degrees per second or radians per second. And so I need to make all the algorithms to get the radians per second into a logical orientation that I can work with. So that, that's the software problem I'm having at the moment. Um, it's still using a BMP280. It's quite a simple sensor. The Pyro channels work. I think I do have a video of that on my Twitter. Um, the landing legs do deploy appropriately from this. It has a tiny SMD LED in there, which has six pins and was almost impossible to solder. <laughs> um, 
it's it's got everything it needs. It's got the thrust vector control pins underneath the nano. I won't take off the nano, but underneath there is the regulators, and on the back is all the tiny 0805 SMD resistors. Um, so this works nicely. However, we still have two problems. The SD problem, as I previously said, um, and it's using a nano. Now, it uses a nano because the nano is cheap, and I'm trying to get to the first launch of spending minimum money at this point. However, the Arduino Nano is very underpowered for the job. I should be using something like a Cortex M4 on a Teensy. Um, that will be happening probably on the next computer. Uh, what have we got in the chat here? These rockets cost like 200 to 300 dollars to develop. I can assure you that is not true. <laughs> it can cost that if you do it out of cardboard. If you don't make a PCB, uh, it, it can, but I can assure you this rocket, the carbon fiber alone was about $200, which is way too much for me. I'm, I only just turned 17. I'm in high school. I don't have a job at the moment because of the current world situation. Um, yes, higher rocket systems, it's like the 1K. It's, but between the rocket and the launch pad, which is probably more expensive than the rocket, it, it's certainly over 1K so far. The controller wasn't as expensive. It's all pretty basic electronics and stuff, and a lot of the stuff I already had lying around. Um, but it's worth it. It's going to be worth the money. The first launch, probably going to fail spectacularly, but eventually I'll get it, and it will be all worth the money. Um, <laughs> Paragon Developments. When I started this project, I had about $250. I started this project before before I got my job, and it lost my job. Um, and I was like, oh, $250? I'll make a cardboard rocket, I'll 3D print some stuff. That'll be fine. It'll be easy. That was not the case. <laughs> that was... That was not the case at all. Um, you probably could do it for that price, but it wouldn't look very nice. And as I said previously in the stream, it needs to look nice. Higher rocket systems. A working launch is the best feeling ever. It's definitely all worth it. That's what I'm hoping. I remember watching Higher Rocket Systems first launch when he, when he got it right, and I was amazed. It was incredible. He got it so smooth, uh, so well on, I think it was his first try, wasn't it, Higher? Um, and that, that really, that sort of that sort of fuels me to keep going, because there is certainly times in the project where it's like, I can't do this, I don't have the skills, I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the time. <laughs> so um, seeing things like that, it, it really makes me keep pushing through. To, to get to the first launch. K9 rocket technologies, I don't want to calculate how much my project costs. At the end of the project, uh, so after the first launch, that's not the end of the project, but after the first launch, I'll be going through every single item and piece that I have and calculating the final cost, which I'm scared to do, but I think it is necessary to know exactly how much it costs. Um, I'd like to be able to give people an answer, because right now, I have no idea. I just know it's a lot. Higher <laughs> Rocket Systems' first launch was luck. Well, it was luck and a lot of work. You spent a long time working that, working on that and tuning that. Um, as we all know, <laughs> Joey Barnard uploaded a new video today about all of his rocket fails. Uh, quite a funny video. He's awesome to watch. Um, sometimes the failures are better than the successes, uh, just because they look cooler. So that that just if you watch that video on BPS Space YouTube channel, uh, the latest video that will show you really how difficult it is and how how much people underestimate going into this task. I underestimated myself. I thought it was going to be really simple, and I thought I'd do it in a few months. But here I am, still going. <laughs> Uh, what have we got in the chat? Nothing much. 
All right, we've got 10 people watching now. Uh, so that's still more than I thought we'd have. How long have I been streaming for here? Uh, half half an hour I've been streaming for. Just gonna check some stuff here. Go back to this screen. Um, all is going well so far. Canine Rocket Technologies, Eddie. I'm always impressed at your amount of documentation. So, <laughs> thanks for saying that. I put a lot of work into documenting everything I do because at the end of this project, I want to release uh, quite a large report about everything I've done, which will be a really, really useful resource to anyone who wants to tackle a project like this in the future. So, as most of you know, on my very dodgy website, you can find a, um, a bunch of reports. So every single month, I release a monthly report on everything that I've done throughout the entire pro throughout throughout that month, all the progress and next month's plans. Um, so those progress reports are quite helpful for me, just a way of documenting what I've done, but also quite interesting to read. Uh, each launch, every launch I do, will have a report released with it about what happened, what went wrong, because something's always going to go wrong, uh, how I can fix it. Basically, just a few pages analysing everything that happened. Um, the final report, the big final report, it's going to be like 30,000 words or so, that will be once I've perfected it. So, you know, it could be after two launches, but probably more like after 20 launches. Um, so that, that, that will explain all the developments afterwards. Um, so yeah, do documentation, I'm, I'm really big on documentation. Uh, it, it is a boring part of things that I'm doing, but it's 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 necessary, I think. It, it makes me a, uh, a better engineer. It helps you guys, uh, because, <laughs> as you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of people trying to do this. Um, so it, it's, sort of, it's sort of like a way of, of us all working together to help each other. So I'm, I'm documenting what I'm doing and putting it out for you guys to see. Got a lot going in the chat here. Hi, Rocket Systems. I've had three launches so far. Number one and three were successful. A video won't be out for a while, but it's all on his Instagram. Yes, go check out Hi, Rocket Systems, Rocket Systems Instagram. Uh, he's doing some very, very interesting stuff. I love the way that he tunes his rocket. Um... I've stolen that idea. Stealing ideas is very common in this. <laughs> um, so what, what higher rocket systems has developed is a stand that holds his rocket at the center of gravity, center of mass, and allows the rocket to pivot in all directions. And then what he's done is he's put in a special thing into the motor mount, which has a propeller, and he uses an RC controller, and the propeller creates thrust and simulates a flight. So you can use that to find the PID values for the control theory, which I won't get into in this live stream. That's a whole other topic. Um, and by doing that, he had a very successful first launch. Um, this is part of that stand, which I've been working on. That stand is held onto this piece of wood. So the stand goes in here like this. Uh, and then that clamps onto my desk. <laughs> the reason why you haven't seen any footage of that, two things, current flight computer doesn't work. Um, the software, as you know, is having problems. And I was testing the propeller for that, and I bought the wrong size electric motor, and I got a lot of smoke and a lot of heat, and it didn't smell very nice. So uh, that needs fixing, or more money, that's just how the project goes. <laughs> um, in the chat here, Canine Rocket Technologies. I admit I'm lazy and haven't done much documentation myself. Recently, I started to log everything because I started to notice how important it is. Uh, even even the main man, Joe Barnard himself, said in a live stream recently how important documenting is and how he regrets not documenting more. Um, so I can't stress that enough. If you're going to tackle a project like this, start documenting. Plan your stuff in documents, all right? Design things in documents. Everything you do, document the date you did it, what happened, what went wrong. 
uh, document your launches, everything you do. Uh, right, Rice Cook, you're from Australia, right? Yes, I am. Down under. Uh, there is a joke going around that apparently if I drop this thing, it'll go into space. That's not true. Not that simple. <laughs> yes, K9 Rocket Systems. Feel free to DM me. Anyone can DM me. Um, whether it's on Twitter, Instagram, uh, I try to reply to everything. YouTube comments, I try to reply to them. So, um, so, yeah, feel free to contact me. Velocity Launch Systems. Where would we be without Joe Barnard? <laughs> this is true. Joe, Joe Barnard invented this stuff. A lot of people think that, um, think that I, I can't with the land leg mechanism, I can't with the prospect control. I did not. Okay, everything on this I designed myself. I'm not copying anything. I'm not copying any code. I'm not copying any 3D files. Everything is designed myself. However, I did not come up with the original mechanism. I give all that credit to Joe Barnard at BPS Space. Absolute legend. I think he's up to like 180,000 YouTube subscribers for it. It's, it's ridiculous the stuff that he's doing. It's really, really advanced. Um... Rice Cook, hey, I'm from Australia too. Awesome. Awesome to have another Australian here. Um, there's not... There, there, there is a couple of people in Australia trying to make thrust-vector controlled rockets, but none of them have gotten very far with it yet. They, they, they thought about it, they started developing things, but they haven't really carried it through. They haven't pushed through with full dedication. Um, obviously, I'm quite dedicated, I I'm going to do this. Eventually, I'm going to do this. <laughs> uh, Hi, Rocket Systems. Contact me anytime. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm on Discord. You can find me a lot of the Discord chats. Um, just, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to have a chat. I, I get a lot of people DM me on Instagram and then have a couple of hours chat with me. That That's fine. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, if you want to do this, want to know where to get started, uh, I have a lot of people who are, who are concerned about where to start with this. Um, DM me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be scared, you know? Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. I feel like I'm not looking at the camera much. So I've got my screen down here that's showing me, and my camera up here. Um, let me know if that's bugging you guys, and I'll try to look at the camera more. <laughs> uh, is the camera focus alright? It looks like if I go to the, the big screen, that's, that's about as good as this old camera is going to focus. Okay, 10 people viewing right now. <laughs> this stream's still going well. If anybody wants me to do something, let me know. If they want me to do some software, some, some CAD design, I've got the monitor just here. If you want me to put something on the monitor, I can. Um, I did consider having a second camera showing something 3D printing, a bit like what you see in Joe Barnard's live streams. Uh, except, you know, that costs more money to get that stuff set up. So I haven't done that yet. Uh, once again, I said earlier in the stream that this webcam will be upgraded as soon as possible. I plan on getting an adapter for my DSLR camera, which should give some really nice, crisp uh, video feed. So we'll see how that goes. Um. Oh! This is a quick plug. Now, I'm not doing this for money. You know by the price, so do I. But I do have a lot of Robinson Aerospace Systems stickers. Nice, glossy stickers. Uh, I'm not selling them for any profit or anything. I just had a bunch of people say to me, Eddie, are you going to do stickers? And for some reason, my whole life, I've had an obsession with stickers. So I was like, sure, why not make stickers of the mission batch? So uh, they are available. There's a link in the description. Um, I think like shipped to the US they're like $6 so they're, they're, they're pretty cheap so if you want a sticker there, there's there's plenty left um, they're not free that would cost me money I'm not going to make them free but you're essentially just paying for the cost of the sticker and shipping I'm not doing it for profit or anything um, Ricardo could you show us how your software works uh, that, that's, a, that's a tricky topic. So, software is the main thing everyone asks me for. Eddie, can I see your software? 
For starters, I don't have software. <laughs> My flat computer software is incomplete. When that's complete, I will be showing that, possibly. Um, but so right now, I can't show you that software. Things like launchpad software, controller software, I'm more than happy to show you people. It's just that the software on the flight computer, for starters, can be used to make guided missiles if adjusted. It's kind of releasing that stuff is a bit is a bit iffy. Shouldn't be shouldn't be doing it. Uh, yeah, as K9 Rockets Technology said, software is a rather sensitive subject in rocketry. Yes, it is. Uh, it also takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, making it kind of kind of close to our hearts, you know. So it, we we don't like to release that stuff easily. Um, at the end of the project, um, I will be releasing a big file which will have heaps of photos, video footage, every 3D file, every piece of software, every report, including the main report. Um, a big file uh, for a fairly cheap price. So I'm not going to make it free, obviously, but it will be available for anybody who wants it. Uh, once again, I'm not doing this for profit or anything. I'm just doing it because I don't want anybody to be able to just get everything that I've worked hard for over the past eight months and the, f the following years, I guess. Um, so yeah, all that stuff will be available. Don't worry about that. Um, what can I show you here? We're starting to lose viewers. Clearly, I was uh, I was boring you guys a bit. Um, I'm trying to think, what have I got for you? What have I got? I'll show you the rocket box. Now, the rocket box is just a big box full of rocket parts. So yeah, all of my spares and stuff go into the rocket box, all the parts waiting to be used as well. 3D carbon vinyl left over from the uh, controller. We have everything here from, ooh, that lighting's bad. The electronic connectors. We have my battery charger. We have boxes for batteries. We have small parts. Um, this is interesting. Um, I think I very briefly talked about this previously in the controller video. This here is a flashing light, a 12 volt flashing light. And so you you see this on top of like a, a car driving in a construction site. But the plan is to have this on the table next to it, next to the controller, and it will plug into the controller. And during the launch countdown, this will start flashing. And essentially, what that does is it alerts all the people around the launch site with cameras uh, that are afar that it's, it's, it's about to launch. It's about to launch, um, you know, keep away from the pad. It, 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 it's more of a gimmick. It's, it's not really necessary, but once again, it looks cool. Everything's about looking cool. <laughs> um, hopefully, I'll have some walkie-talkies, I think. I don't have a couple, but I think Dad might have a couple that I'll be able to use. That was my dog, if you heard that. <laughs> um, the pneumatic stuff in here. The pneumatic system may or may not work for the first launch. Uh, I'm hoping so, but I'm having some problems with that, shipping delays, and it's expensive. Valves and adapters and fittings are expensive. Um, I'll put the box down for now. I've got some stuff up in the chat. In the chat here, I'll try to reply to any questions in the chat. The, uh, the, the, it is titled Test Dream and Q&A. <laughs> um, okay, no ah, oh, yes, the goodie box. All of us have to admit, we've, we all have one with all our favourite parts in it and go through it once in a while, yes. Um, I've mainly got my, my bigger parts, so I have uh, lots of electronic stuff in cases. Um, not rocketry dedicated stuff, but just, just general stuff. I accumulate a lot of electronic parts. Um, I have my tool trolley down here and stuff. Um, so I've got, I've got plenty of parts around. Um, back to the goodie box for now. Uh, I'm gonna take some stuff out here so I can, so I can see what's going on. If I pull this out, 
So you see I've got an adapter and that simple camera's off you that simply plugs into the controller. Um, so this is the cheap battery charger that I have. So it works fine. I think it was like twenty five bucks. Mountain Dew. Uh, if you can hear that in the background, that is my really, really annoying dog. <laughs> um, this is a weight that I made. So it's just filled with gravel, I think it's 500 grams, and then the lid's been put on with epoxy. So that was tied onto the parachute for the parachute drop tests, <laughs> which I am not confident with. It fell a bit harder than I thought it would. So uh, we'll see how we go. The rocket might fall a bit hard on first launch if the parachute even deploys. <laughs> but see how that goes. We have a stand for the thrust vector control testing. Air tank. So this air tank will be going inside of the launch pad. Um, that is just an old mini fire extinguisher. <laughs> um, I'm not going to show you everything in here. A lot of the stuff's kind of boring. We have pressure relief valves. Can't do that properly. There you go. For the pneumatic system, uh, the pneumatic system requires a lot of stuff. I mentioned earlier the tiny motor that I burnt out. There you go. I bought the wrong motor. It's absolutely tiny and it didn't last very long. Whoops. What have we got in here? We got spare fabric, pneumatic tube. Uh, electronics, propellers, just all the spares. Sometimes I, I buy extras of things because I expect things to break. Um, this is quite interesting. This is the solenoid valve to control the pneumatic system. So that will go underneath the launch pad and uh, make the strong back do its thing. It's a lot of work and a lot of money to make the strong back retract, but that's the, besides the point. As most of you know, the whole reason for this project is to learn things, um, and by doing the pneumatic system, I get to learn about how pneumatics work. So that, that's just another thing I got to learn. Uh, a lot of boxes, nuts, bolts, uh, that, that's about it. Well, the stuff's not overly interesting. I haven't accumulated that much stuff yet, but throughout the project, I'm sure this box is going to overflow a lot. Put all this stuff away. Chuck it all in there for now. Right, I'm gonna check the chat now. Have you not built any rockets previously? Not prospect controlled. Um, interesting question. Uh, this is going to be shocking to anyone. I live in Australia, which isn't the shocking news, but in Australia, it's really hard and really rare to launch a model rocket. Getting the rocket motors requires permits. Uh, it often requires joining a club. Not in my case, because I'm getting permits. Um, but it's it's not a very common thing. However, uh, I've, I've actually never seen a motor rocket launch. I've never seen a motor rocket motor get ignited or anything. So my first motor rocket launch is going to be this. Um, Give me a second here. I'm back. Uh, Rice Cook, do you use black powder charger to eject parachutes? If so, where do you get your black powder? Very good question. <laughs> we, don't, we don't live in America. It's not very widely available. So, um... Yes, it uses a black powder ejection charge, which goes just below the T, inside of there. Um, they are going to be custom made for this rocket by a pyrotechnician that I've, uh, that I've been contacting a lot. Uh, that's also the way that I know all the laws and stuff about model rockets, because it's not very clear in Australia. So by talking to a pyrotechnician who is really into model rocketry as well, uh, he's been able to help me a lot. I have the the project wouldn't work without him, essentially. The Hilar Rocket Technologies. Welcome to the stream, buddy. 
I've lost like launch systems. You're doing great for never have built one before. <laughs> the funny thing is, if you ask me to build a standard finned model rocket from scratch, off the top of my head, I wouldn't know how to build it. I wouldn't know how to mount the fins on. I wouldn't know how to mount the, the, the motor, um, the motor stuff like that. I only know about I suspect, control rockets. I don't know about the basics. Uh, I'm like, go and learn about that stuff. That's probably important for me to know that. Um, but yeah, I th I don't. Th this is the only motor rocket I own. The only motor rocket I've ever seen. Right? Um, oh, I guess apart from this, which was a test piece. Some of you might have seen that back in the early days. Back. The Hilar Rocket Technology loved the hoodie. Thanks, man. It was a birthday about a week ago, and my sister got this hoodie for me, and I love it. I think I've worn it every day. <laughs> um, I love space hoodies. I've got another NASA hoodie with the uh, the meatball logo on it. I've got a SpaceX hoodie, not an official SpaceX hoodie. I cannot afford that stuff. Um, but. Yeah, I, lo well, I like the hoodie. I, I really want some hoodie. Um, correction: the project would not be legal without the pirate technician. Well, that, if I didn't have the pirate technician, I'm sure I would find a way to get ejection charges legally. <laughs> I'm sure I'd find a website that sells them legally, and I could use my permit for. Um, but yeah, he, he's helping a lot. Uh, essentially. I wouldn't have the confidence to be playing with black powder motors in, in Australia where laws and that are really tight without talking to the pyrotechnician. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you can thank him for that. Um, I nearly forgot. This is really awesome, okay? So, the rocket launch pad doesn't do much yet, but it does do this. We got lights. If I move this out of the way, there you go. Now you can see that one as well. We've got lights on the other side that are behind the rocket. Um, <laughs> you know, that's all it does right now. It just flashes lights. But it's better than nothing. It's a start. Get this pin back in. It's just bouncing around, it's making me What do we got? God love the activate windows. Well, yeah, so this is a, um, this is a computer that I bought from someone, third hand I think it was, uh, for really cheap price with pretty decent specs, I'm happy with it. And, um, when I got it, it was really dusty, hadn't been taken care of at all, so I literally... I tore it apart completely, I tore every part out of it, I cleaned everything really, really well, and then I put everything back together and I wiped everything, completely refresh, install of Windows, uh, and it says activate Windows because I haven't bought the licensing for it, because I don't need to spend that money on the licensing, it works fine, you know? <laughs> Regardless of, of what you see here, I'm, I'm pretty tired with money, I, I don't like to spend money unnecessarily. Um, what have we got in the chat here? Dr. B, hey, hey, Dr. B. Kind of rocket technology, gotta love the RGB. I can assure you everything has RGB. The flight computer has RGB. The launch pad is obviously covered in RGB. If we get the controller, I can assure you <laughs> the controller does not have RGB, which is a disappointment. However, it does have lots of lighting. We've got these lights here, and this light here. These, these are new. You haven't seen these yet, actually. Uh, really poor video feed, sorry. But the lights are actually in a bevel. Um, so that looks pretty cool. Also, thanks to Joe Barnard, I have got the cable for the antenna. Um, what are you four watching now? It's dropped a lot. I might end the stream sometime soon. Uh, I'm, I'm really I'm running out of things to talk about here. Um, so, 
if anyone's got any questions, ask them now. <laughs> the stream is a Q and A. Um, I'm happy to answer everything. So you like rocket technologies? Do you have the carbon fiber? Do you mean like spare fabric? Because the rocket's carbon fiber. That's carbon fiber there. Um, but I do have. I don't touch it often because it's quite fragile. But there's the raw carbon fiber fabric, um, which is really nice stuff. Uh, <laughs> if you ever get a chance to buy raw carbon fiber fabric for cheap, just buy it. You don't have to have a use for it, just buy it because it is beautiful stuff. Um, I got that from China. Carbon fiber fabric is very expensive, so I bought it from China. Works fine. It's very strong. It's, I'm very happy with it. And it was, I think, $25 for a square meter, which is extremely cheap. K9 rocket technology, you should wear gloves when touching raw carbon fiber. I probably should, but I don't. When I did the epoxy for it, so when I when I made this tube and I mixed up the epoxy, I could show you I was wearing gloves. Um, afterwards, so I'll be right back. Here. Now I'm gonna be very careful with this. That's the end of the tube. That's the that's the cutter from the tube, and some of that stuff can be quite sharp, very sharp and dangerous. So when I was doing all that, I was I was wearing gloves. Um, I couldn't bring myself to throw this off cut out. It's carbon fiber, I can't just throw out the carbon fiber. So there you go, after it's made it has quite a horrible texture and it takes a lot of work to go from this to the nice carbon fiber look that carbon fiber is known for. Like fiberglass, the tiny strands are bad for your skin. Yes, I know that fiberglass is quite bad for you. I haven't heard much about carbon fiber being bad, but when I make my next rocket, which will be fiberglass because it's cheaper and lighter, uh, I will definitely be wearing gloves and stuff to handle it. Uh, you get all the fibers st stuck in your hands and stuff. It's not very nice to work with. The nose cone is 3D printed. It was going to be fiberglass. In fact, give me a second here. I have half the fiberglass mold for it just here. Um, but that idea was scrapped after my dad strongly recommended that I don't do fiberglass uh, because it's quite messy to work with. <laughs> you notice how did you? Um, give me a You, know, you, you notice the, uh, the trash can just here. I decided that, um, that I was going to name that Jeff Bezos. And then Fusion 360 was named Elon Musk because I have an obsession with Fusion 360. It's just such a nice software to, to, um, to use. K9 Rocket Technologies, how many times did you have to sand and re-epoxy for glossy finish? My tube and fairing took about four times. Yeah, so that was that was a, uh, a problem. When I made the carbon fiber, I took off the pill ply, which is a, a temporary thing you put around it, and it looked horrible. You could not see the pattern in it at all. Um, so I gave it a really, really, really good wet sand, uh, making sure I didn't get black stuff on the sandpaper. If you have black on the sandpaper, not good. It means you're damaging the fibers. Um, and then a layer of epoxy, um, I'm pretty sure I put more pill ply on it as well, and I took that off more sanding, layer of epoxy. What did I do? Okay, this is where documentation comes in handy. Um, and then after that, I gave a really good clear coat, not not with like a, a, a rattle can, but like an actual compressed, air, like from an air compressor spray gun, I gave it a really nice clear coat. Um, and then it's... It gave it that really nice, that really nice look that carbon fiber is known for. Uh, be a lot of technologies. 
I'll see if I can rename the bin on macOS. Apple doesn't like you editing their apps. Can can your trash can I change the icon to change the image? Uh, let me see. Um, I'm 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 assuming not. I, I know that you used to be able to change the um, the icon of folders back on an older version of Windows. We used to do that a lot in primary school. Go to this for example. Properties. Customize it. Here we go. <laughs> you, you still can change the icon. Um, I'm assuming you can download icons or make icons with some sort of software. I'll have to look into that. It'd be really funny if you can. Um, so to this PC. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that later. That's a good idea. Um, logistics. Awesome vid, mate. Looking forward to seeing more in the future. I've had a few people lately say to me that they've learned a lot from some of my videos, uh, which which means a lot. It, it means to me that the work that I'm doing to make the videos is worthwhile. I'm not making the videos for myself. I, I don't need to make the videos. I'm doing it so that other people can learn things. Um, so yeah, when when people tell me that they're learning a lot from my videos, that 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 means a lot, and I'm definitely going to continue to making videos to to make videos about what I'm doing. Next video will be on the launch pad. That will be probably sort of 15 minutes, quite quite detailed about all the launch pad systems. Uh, we'll give a bit of a demo of everything working. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see how that goes. Um, I have lots of videos in my mind once everything's working nicely. So a video about the flight computer, a video about the ejection system. I'm sure you asked a lot about that in, in, in here. Uh, another video about the speed control, like an update on that. So there's plenty of videos for me to make. It's just right now I'm focusing all of my time on getting the launch pad done. Um, but yeah, certainly lots of lots of videos coming when I, when I get into the swing of sort of making videos. But yeah, right now priority is getting the launch pad done. What's happening in the chat here? Can I I love the Windows customization ability. You can customize a lot. Like as you can see here, my background is moving, <laughs> which is pretty cool. That's not a Windows thing. That's 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 just, it's just here. It's called Wallpaper Engine. You download it through Steam. It's only a few dollars worth every cent. Um, <laughs> yeah, if I actually, if I scoot over to my other screen, um, you know, both screens. You can see I've got the Falcon Heavy just here, and uh, that moves as well. So pretty, pretty awesome wallpapers. I, I love them a lot. Um, back to screen one. There we go. What have we got? Eight watching now. <laughs> I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, So I'm just gonna let you guys know one more time because these are a fairly recent thing. Uh, the stickers, plenty of stickers. We've got a link in the description for the stickers. I'm not blaming them for profit. Please don't don't think here that I'm trying to earn money out of them. That's not the case at all. They're very cheap. You literally you pay for the sticker cost and you pay for shipping and you get a sticker. Um, it's not a profit thing at all. Um, I do. I do. You can see the sticker in here. I had an empty space in the controller, so I put a sticker just here. Nice Project Summit sticker. Um, and I have been trying to do sticker swaps with people. So uh, me and Rob at T0 Systems are going to do a sticker swap. So I'll, I'll get a, a, a T0 System sticker. And I'll ask if Joe Barnard wants to as well. And I'll, uh, I'll put them somewhere on... Maybe maybe on the controller case would, would look nice if I just sort of line up all the stickers and yeah. But the, with a project like this, there's just so many ideas that just keep going around. You have so many ideas on ways you can make it better, things you can do, um, ideas for the future, upgrading things. Uh, in some ways, a lot of those ideas I just got to shove to one side for now 
because I need to get this thing f to the first launch. I need to get this thing launching properly, and then I can start thinking about all those fancy ideas. Um, but a project like this, it really depends on how far you want to take it. It just, it's it's like any hobby, like you can take it as far as you want, you know. And, and this this is no exception. You can go as basic as you want, and then there's there's, there's no limit to how advanced you can go. You no, know, the sky's the limit. You, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm 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 really happy with the progress that um that, that's going on here. So um. Yeah, BLR rocket technology sticker swaps. I got fifty BLR stickers left. Uh, happily, yeah, man, sure. I'll do a sticker swap. D DM me, and um, yeah, I'll I'll send you one. I'll pay for postage. You pay for your postage. Hmm. If anyone else has has got like a, a a rocket company, you know, Robinson Aerospace isn't isn't a company. Um, if anyone's got got a rocket company and wants to do a sticker swap, DM me. I'm happy to. Want to want to click all the stickers. <laughs> I actually, I have a big box that has like probably two thousand stickers in it. Yeah, I've just collected. I don't use stickers ever, but I love stickers. I don't know why. <laughs> just a, a, a little obsession of me. All right, let's, let's check some stats here. I'm gonna be quiet for for just a minute. It says we got excellent connection. So obviously my camera is lagging, but you guys can hear me fine and stuff. Yeah, just let, let, let me know how the stream's going in general. All right, all this feedback really helps for um for for future streams. If there's something you don't like, let me know. Be harsh, all right? <laughs> Be harsh on me. Um, th this stream's just just a way of of testing things and figuring things out, so I can make future streams. You know, if I'm doing software, I can stream software. If I'm doing hardware, I can stream hardware. And eventually, not the first launch, but I would like to stream launches. Um, I've got some sort of idea on how to make that work, uh, but yeah, certainly I would like to be streaming launches in the future. First few launches, there will be very few spectators, that, well no spectators, everyone there will have a job to do, uh, keeping it as quiet as possible. In terms of launch sites, I have a lot of people saying, you live in Australia, where are you going to launch? And I can launch just about anywhere uh, because they are low powered rockets. Um, I have the permit to purchase and use the explosives, the explosives, they class modes as explosives. Um, so um, I'll be launching, I have two potential launch sites. One is on council property on an oval, like a sort of hidden oval that no one ever uses, with a nice cricket pitch in the middle. Um, but I need, I need council permission for that, and asking the council to use their oval to launch a rocket could be difficult. Um, the other is a uh, a school oval, an oval at my school, a very big oval, cricket pit to move once again, and I need to talk to my principal about using that oval on the weekends to launch a rocket, which could be an interesting conversation. <laughs> um, I'm going to be back in about one minute. There you go, I'm back already. It's me. What have we got happening in the chat here? Max is 720p. Yeah, the, the webcam is not very good. I've said multiple times in the stream I will be upgrading the webcam as soon as possible because it's it's shocking. <laughs> uh, can I really technology? I have some custom final stickers and it's really satisfying. Um, actually, I have access to a vinyl cutter at my school, which is how I've made all the rocket graphics. And these spare stickers just here are all custom made from that vinyl cutter. And the vinyl cutter, um, the school don't cheap out on equipment, and they have like a really, really nice, expensive rolling vinyl cutter. And it is a beautiful machine to work with. It cuts so fast, so nice, and it's so simple to use. Um, Liar, that was less than that was, that was about 15 seconds. Yeah, that was very quick intermission. Um, I do have the ability to do intermissions, however, uh, 
I don't, I don't really need to. This is a fairly short stream. Was it? What are we? We're at an hour and 12 minutes of me talking. Wow. You guys have been watching me talk for an hour and 12 minutes. You guys are probably really bored. Seriously, whenever I talk to anybody about this rocket project, like face to face, they just walk away. It's, people are so sick of me talking about it. <laughs> Uh, so here you go, that, that's why I'm talking a lot here, I'm on the stream, people are actually interested in what I'm saying, so I'm just telling you what's going on. Why is the stream such poor quality? The stream's glitching a bit. Shouldn't be. This is all just, just, just test once again, so if something bad happens in the stream, let me know straight away, and I'll figure out how to fix it. Um, anything to just be harsh on me. K9 rocket technology, what's your favourite orbital rocket? Um, well, I'm a SpaceX fan. The reason I'm interested in rockets is because of SpaceX. So, I, I guess <laughs> the Falcon Heavy is a beautiful piece of engineering. I remember watching that live and I was just amazed like that that was i've only been interested in rockets fairly recently you know around the time of the first falcon heavy launch i got interested in rockets so I, I didn't see the test launch but i saw a replay of it and i was like wow that's awesome and then the next falcon heavy launch i remember watching and going like oh my gosh you know so um falcon heavy is definitely a beautiful rocket the starlink mission last night or early in the morning for you americans was a beautiful launch. The light on that was incredible. Um, if you're talking about suborbital rockets, favorite suborbital rocket, um, up aerospace, exos aerospace, they're doing some really beautiful stuff there. Um, BLR rocket technologies, when you have the Sims but not KSB. <laughs> that, that's a good point. I have never played this, I only got it because it was free. Um, I used to play Farming Simulator a lot. Um, never really played Subnautica. This one was a good game that I didn't play for long. Portal was great, I love Portal. Um, but I, I don't ever play video games anymore. I used to, but I simply don't have the time in my life anymore. Every spare minute of my life, I'm working on the rocket. I don't, I don't really waste time on video games anymore. Not that they're all a waste of time, except for that there's better uses of my time. And no, I don't have KSP. I feel like, as a person who's obsessed with rockets, I am obliged to get KSP. <laughs> However, I do not. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'll, get, I'll get it one day, sure. Yeah. Can I rocket technology? I never played KSP, nor have it. Well, there you go. <laughs> Wii Sports. Very occasionally, like once every few months, I play uh, For the Horizon. That's that's a good game. Um, but yeah, actually, the main reason I don't play video games is because everything I do, I get really obsessed with and focused on. So uh, I used to play video games on the PS4, and I got so obsessed with a video game that the only way for me to uh, to stop playing it was to literally sell the PS4. So I sold the PS4, I got rid of it. Um, God says with Fortnite as well, you know. <laughs> uh, this is just me destroying myself. Um, what have we got here? <laughs> Wii Fit and Wii Sports Resort. Wii's still good. I still have a Wii. Alright. Anyway, back onto Rockets. We're getting a bit off topic here. Um, views on PS5. Now. I've owned both the PS4 and Xbox One, and I can tell you right now, they're exactly the same. There's no difference, there's none that I prefer. It simply depends on which games you want. So, don't, don't think for a minute that I'm like PS4 or Xbox One. Like, I, I, I don't really care. However, the PS5 looks shocking. I hate the look of it. That's all I can comment right now. It's Fallout 9, I don't know what it looks like. What do you got here? Cool, man. For my end, the stream looks pretty good. Awesome. Need a new camera? Yes. Um, yes, yeah, space SpaceX. Um, you know, I don't really like Jeff Bezos, but 
I would like it if Blue Origin like sort of got up there and Space had a competitor because right now SpaceX don't really have a, a competitor as such, um, but they will dominate everything. Uh, the future for SpaceX is looking very bright, especially with the man himself, Elon Musk, behind it. He is an absolute genius. Um, what have we got? Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab is a great company. Really close to me in New Zealand. I'm actually. I really want to fly over to New Zealand because I, I, I mean I'm in Australia, not not that far. I really want to fly to New Zealand to watch a rocket launch because I've never seen a rocket launch. Of course, it's not a rocket launch is in Australia. Um, but as far as I'm aware, you can't watch a rocket lab's launch. Apparently, they're really remote and there's no like grandstands or anything. So I have to essentially find somewhere where I can just see it sort of go up into the sky, which probably isn't really worth flying to New Zealand for. Um, yeah, different scale of economy. Rocket Labs are very focused on the small market. Um, yeah, you want so, so Logis has said that he wants to see more videos of electronics and coding. That will certainly come. Uh, lots of videos on electronics and software. Uh, I'll probably end up doing sort of like tutorials, you know, how, how to design PCBs. But right now, there's plenty of stuff like that on the internet. Go, go to BPS Space, you'll find plenty of stuff from him. K9 Rocket Technology, I'm a big loyal SpaceX fan. Aren't we all? I'm wearing a NASA t shirt. I love NASA, of course, but SpaceX. Um, BLR Rocket Technology, I see no point in gaming consoles. PC Master Race, and right? PC. <laughs> Game Boys, yes. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff in the car. I can't go up with the comments here. Uh, what is your favourite Aussie food slash snack? Um, that's a tough question. I don't have a favourite in there. I love Tim Tams. I think you can get those other places in the world now, but they're, they're a food to in Australia. Um, yeah, I, I can't really comment on a good Aussie bun and snack can't go wrong with that. Americans will have no idea what I'm talking about right now, but <laughs> finding snag is good. <laughs> I swear if he says Vegemite. No, I do not like Vegemite. People in Australia get very offended that I don't like Vegemite, but it's it's not very nice stuff. <laughs> Lloyd just said he's in New Zealand and LC1 is not that accessible. Um, I'd like to know if you can see the rocket launches from elsewhere though, like if there's somewhere you, you can't necessarily see the launch pad, but you can still see it go up. But I really would like to go to New Zealand to watch that. Um, Kono Rocket Technologies, thanks heaps for watching the stream, buddy. Um, see you later. DM me sometime, I'm happy to have a chat. Um, there's a local farm you can watch from sometimes. Okay, that that's that's good to know because I was, I was talking to my dad, and my dad said, Yeah, New Zealand's a beautiful place, I'd love to go there. So, <laughs> that, that is a possibility. Um, Andy Levine, hey Eddie, hey Andy, how's it going? Um, so yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. <laughs> if I was to go to New Zealand, I'd probably film the launch just because that's what people do when they watch rocket launches, they film it and put it on YouTube. Um, I'd like to take some photos. Some of those those nice long exposure shots of the trajectory, I'd like to do that. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I live in Australia. There's no rocket launches anywhere in Australia. The nearest is New Zealand. Obviously, a dream would be to go to the Cape and see everything on the Cape, see SpaceX headquarters, um, and obviously see like a Falcon 9 launch, or even better, a Falcon Heavy or Starship launch. But uh, chances of me going to the Cape anytime soon are pretty slim. Let me check here. Five people watching now. Six people watching now. Someone else joined. Um, anyone who's just joined, uh, I've got nothing to talk about. I'm, I'm just here testing the stream, uh, answering questions. If anyone's got any questions, anything that they want me to show them right now, uh, I've got the monitor here. I can show you some CAD stuff. If anyone wants to see something right now, then, uh, then let me know. See you later, logistics. It was good to good having you in the stream, stream and having a chat with you. 
What kind of shot? I'm trying to think of what I can show you guys. You know what I can do? I will take the rocket off the pad carefully and show you that a bit closer. There we go, rocket is off the pad. So, um, I don't think I actually have any this in a YouTube video yet. This is a close up to the launch pad. I will get to that, certainly. Um, so, in the bottom of the rocket, I currently have a dummy motor. So, that's a, a cardboard tube that just had to be the perfect size that I put the perfect amount of weight in. Um, the landing legs are finished. This is pretty much how it's going to fly. What you see here is pretty much how it's going to fly. There's a video of the nose cone, so you've all seen the, the, the beautiful shiny nose cone. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Currently, obviously, no flight computer in it. The current flight computer is here and probably won't fly still, probably the next flight computer. Um, if anybody really wants me to, I'm happy to pull the rocket apart and show you guys what's inside. Let me know in the uh, in the chat and I'll happily do that. Uh, where can I put this for now? Carefully lean that just there. Um, Close-ups of the pad. That That is for a video. The pad is not very mobile. It weighs a lot. <laughs> um, and it's kind of balancing there. Uh, however, I can sp I can spin the launch pad around if you want to see the back of it. Um, I'll, I'll do that for you, actually. Okay, there you go. So that is the back of the launch pad. You can see we've got the pneumatic piston here. Um, the piston goes, the airlines go in here, and this hole here is for the pressure relief valve so that I can quickly release all the pressure out of the system. Here is all the buttons and switches for it. So there's not much on it because it's all controlled by the wireless controller. However, we do have key switch to turn it on and off and a DC jack for external power so it can be on battery power or external power which is what one of the switches is for um, essentially because as you know I kill a lot about looks and when I'm displaying this thing I want to be able to switch between power point and battery and one of the switches is also for display mode which essentially just makes it so that the lights are just still and it just holds the rocket and doesn't expect anything to happen, just display mode, just sits there and gets stared. Uh, so that is the back of the pad. Up the top here, I can bring closer to us, you can see we've got the antenna. The servo leads go into the hole just here. Um, the arms need upgrading, they're very weak, very flimsy. But um, that's all you see for now. That's all, that's all for a future video. <laughs> um, rice cook, the inside. You want to see what's inside the pad? That's also for another video. You'll see that eventually. Actually, on Twitter, I think there's some photos of what's inside of that. Um, not much at the moment. It's getting there. Um, as you know, it, it's all a work in progress. It's not finished yet. What have we got here? Um, I'm going to flip that back around here. Oh. I'd like to put that thing on the scale sometimes, see how much it weighs. <laughs> it's not life. <laughs> um, I was also thinking, just here, we've got all this blank area. Do you guys think that I should put some sort of nice little metal plaque on it? Just saying, like, you know, Project Summer 2019 to 2020, uh, something like that, like a little metal plaque just just to finish off the whole thing. I don't know. But that is, that is something that I've thought of. We've got six watching right now. <laughs> Pretty small stream. Five watching now. Goodbye, whoever just left. Um, you know, I'm not doing the stream for the views or anything, it's just a, uh, 
test string. Um, I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon, so if anyone's got any more questions, then uh, now's the chance to be asking the questions. Altogether, how much would you say the entire project costs? Uh, we did discuss that a bit earlier in the stream. Uh, a lot. Way too much. Don't know the exact cost yet. Over $1,000. Uh, I will work that out at the end. Um, anything else to show you? Oh, I haven't showed you these yet. These are my new rocket stands. So when I'm working on the rocket, this stand's designed to, to fit the rocket nicely, and then the rocket doesn't roll off the bench. Um, Alright, well I think that during this stream, I've showed you guys a lot of stuff. Um, hopefully I haven't given away too many secrets. Um, but stay tuned. Hopefully the launch pad video will be two or three weeks. Hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe less, maybe more, I don't know. But yeah, I'm working really hard a lot at the moment to get that launch pad uh, finished so I can make a video on it. Um, that's like my highest priority right now. Um, maybe by next stream, I'll have a better camera going. Uh, hopefully, I'm, uh, I'll am work on that. It's gonna cost a bit of money, but I think it's worth, worth any money that it costs. Um, Overall, the project is going really great. It's got some delays, but that's all, that's always expected. Um, but yeah, this pretty much wraps up the stream. If you've got any last minute questions, now's the time. Uh, thanks to thanks to everyone who watched, watched this stream. Um, any support's appreciated. The easiest way to support me is just to just to tell people about my videos, share the videos, uh, subscribe. Uh, that that that's the the easiest and best way to support me. Um, but yeah, I, I got a lot of support through the uh, the controller post and instructables. I was pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to see more, follow follow my Twitter. There's a link in the description. That's where I post all the daily updates. Um, but yeah, next time you see me on YouTube will be another stream in a couple of weeks or launchpad video sometime soon um, I'll try to step up the quality of that video um, I'm working hard to make my YouTube video better um, but for now to everyone who watched this live stream this first not very good <laughs> test live stream thank you so much for coming um, if anyone's got any comments comment them below I'll try to reply as soon as I see them uh, but for now this is going to be the end of the stream thanks a lot for watching.